There is no other love in our life but you, Abba Yahweh, and Yeshua, and the precious Holy Ruach Kadesh. We thank you, Father. We praise you. Oh, Father, just want to praise you, just want to praise you, just want to bless you, just want to bless you. Righteous God Almighty, make us righteous, mighty Father. Continue to know your children, make us holy. Abba Yashina, to fulfill the plans you have for your children in the name of Yeshua Mashiach. Oh, Lord, to be to your wonderful name, Abba Yahweh. Thank you, thank you for blessing us this morning. Thank you for speaking our spiritual music, Abba Yahweh, and Yeshua Amashia, and to be a blessing in the name of Yeshua Mashia. Oh, daddy, this is my prayer. Abba Yahweh, crave your holy blood, your etc., my mouth and my tongue. Oh, Father, to control my mouth and my shina, that no full spirit, false tongue shall ever come forth. I crucify my flesh from your in your Shushik's name, I claim you, T19. I bind you, Satan, away from this place. In your Shushik's name, I bind the spiritual host of wickedness in the heavenly places, in the ocean, on the land, on this place around me. In your Shushik's name, I bind up by the Yahweh, in the spirit of pride, in Ashina, by the Ashina, foolishness and twisting words, in Yeshua, Mashid, or Ashina, fear, intimidation, about Karashina, worriness, about Karashina. You're the God Almighty created my mouth of Roshina and I put the words in my mouth to be spoken this morning, to be a blessing to your children this morning, Almighty Yahweh. So the glory belongs to you. It will go to you alone, Abba Yahweh. Oh, your children do not seek our, our own praise, Abba Yah. But we seek your praise, Father. We only seek to please you, Father, this morning in Yahusha and Shia's name. This is my prayer, Father, Abba Yahweh. Bless all your beloved children whose names are written man's book of life. In your Shum Sheik's name, I praise you, Abba Yah. Glory to your holy name. Hallelujah, hallelujah. In Shum Sheik's name, I pray. Amen, 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 Abba Yahweh. Oh, may our lips never cease to praise our God Almighty. Amen. Praise you, Shem Especially in time of wild seas and, and trouble, that we praise our God Almighty, for He always has a way out. Amen. Praise you, Shem I'm going to read Prophecy 102. Yosha says, It's only a matter of time. Written and spoken under the anointing of the Holy Ruach Kodesh, your Apostle Elizabeth Elijah, October 17, 2008, during Sukkot. This was transcribed from an audio tape. And this is Elizabeth speaking. October 17, 2008. I was unable to sleep. Much is going on in our life right now. Hatred is coming at me from so many different directions. It feels like a weapon. And I know the enemy is going to hate me. But what hurts the worst is those who were, who were claiming they love Jesus, Yahushua. And yet they send their witness of hatred. And hatred is a spirit where the people know it or not. And when you hate, you send forth an evil spirit, especially when it's towards somebody who loves Yahushua. So anyway, we were in prayer and I had this vision. I kept seeing again and again and again. We were praying about something personal in our life here at the Bride Sanctuary, for the attacks have been great, especially since we spent the two, about $6,500 just to, to be able to speak the truth to those that would read sense.com. We get the letters that the backsliders have returned and the newcomers have given their life to Yahushua Mashiach, but we get some hateful, hateful, hateful letters, and woe be unto you who send these hateful letters. The funny part is we even hear from aliens, but we won't go there now because they're really not funny and we know that they're real. It's just that they even think this ministry is a threat. So here's my vision as I was praying with Katrina. We were praying and this is the vision I saw again and again. I've never had a vision like this because I could hold it. I could hold it to be able to see clearly what was there. And then I opened my eyes and I talked to Katrina. And then I closed my eyes again and it's back again. It happened three times and I always want to remember this. This is a time of Sukkot. This will be the third night tonight. And so this is going to be a Sukkot message. What I saw was a rectangular, 
rectangular window, and it definitely looked like it would have been in a prison cell. It had five thick bars coming down it. I looked and I counted the bars. They were black, thick, heavy bars. As I looked out the window, I could barely make out a tree. Then I said, what is it I am seeing? Oh, it's a tree. All of a sudden, Yahweh took away the bars and I could, I could clearly see. There were five very tall, strong, healthy, we would call them evergreen trees, but I keep hearing the word fir tree standing in a row, beautiful trees. Then I opened my eyes and I'll tell Katharina, whoa, look what I just saw. I'm not one to have visions that easily. Usually they would just go quickly, come and go, but this was a long-lasting vision. He wanted me to see this. Each time that I opened my eyes, then I closed my eyes, and we were on another topic, and whoa, I see the prison bars again. Then I see them gone, and then I see the five trees again. I was pondering this afterwards. I said, please pray about this. I don't have the meaning of this. It troubles me, and I'll have no peace until I have the meaning of this vision. As we started praying, all of a sudden, it was so easy, and the word starts coming forth. So now I'm going to believe in faith that Abba Yahweh is going to give this back to me, the meaning of the vision and the word that he has. I've already asked and I've already pleaded the blood of Yahushua, our Mashiach, over my lips. I've already put a lock and a key on them. I already reminded him he is the creator of these lips and he's the only one that can keep these lips from speaking forth any word that is not of him. I encourage everyone who believe that they are the that they have the gift of a prophet, that they should do the same thing because truly false prophets are everywhere right now and then there are those who prophesy falsely and yet they love Yahushua and I do not doubt that. Yet the things that they are prophesying are not coming to pass and they've been deceived by the evil spirit or their flesh is speaking out. Either way, they've been deceived and yet Yahweh said they are, these are not called false prophets but they have prophesied falsely. A false prophet, someone who knowingly leads people straight for their own motivations, will lead them to a different truth, to a different God. I'm laughing now because I'm thinking about Ulgon and a certain false prophet named Shiri Shraina who wants you to put your faith in Ulgon, who now says the most horrendous lies against me in this ministry. But oh well, what can you expect from an alien? So anyway, now I'm asking Abba Yahweh to give me back these words in the name of Yahushua HaMashiach. So Abba Yahweh, again I ask you if you would please repeat to me, if that was you that spoke these words, then please repeat to me again, what were the prison bars that I saw? Why were they removed and why were the five strong trees standing there, the fir trees? Elizabeth speaks in holy tongues. Oh Abba Yahweh, Please give it to me again. I'm so sorry that we weren't ready. Please give it back to me. When I said we weren't ready, we didn't have batteries in the tape recorder and the anointing so fragile. And the prophetic word starts. Oh my precious bride, my precious bride, my precious bride. At this time of celebration during Sukkot, I give you this message of hope. I speak to those who put me first in their love and in their life, who are not ashamed of the name of Yahushua, your Mashiach. All others just go ahead and remain dead and remain blind. This word is not for you at this time. I show you, Elizabeth, a vision of a prison window with five bars. My precious bride, you are represented by the five wise virgins in the parable of the Holy Scriptures. The enemy will try to trap you and imprison you in five different ways. There's only one way out. There's only one view. For right before your eyes, Elizabeth, I remove those bars. For this is my promise unto my bride. And you shall stand as that firm tree planted by the water, the living water. And I speak health. And I speak prosperity. And I speak the blessings reserved for those who obey Deuteronomy 28. And the five trees represents the five wise virgins who represent my true bride. I will always provide a way for you of escape. Even when you think the enemy has got you boxed in, 
Again and again, I have said this to Elizabeth. You walk by faith and not by sight. Beware, my precious bride. Five different ways the enemies in this world and the enemies coming to this world will try to imprison you in five different ways. I warn you now, seek me. Pray where your ark is. Pray when it's no longer safe for you to remain where you are. Pray that I raise up a safe house for you, a safe sanctuary. I tell you ahead of time what the enemy's plans to do. It's only a matter of time. It's only a matter of time. Weigh your words carefully, beloved bride. Get used to looking over your back for even those you love, if they are not saved, will attack. Beware, my bride. Guard your tongue. Such were the days of old, sad to say, these days have come for some, for others it will come later. The enemy, enemy spies on you. They try to watch your every move. They twist your words as if it's a dagger to plunge into your heart. My beloved bride, there is no such thing on this earth as freedom for you anymore unless it's through me. In my name, in the name of Yahushua, your Mashiach, there is freedom in me. So hide yourself for a little while until my rage and my fury and my wrath pass over those who are only fit to be my enemies for the hateful words and actions thus done unto you. For the persecution that comes to you it is because they see me in you. They cannot touch me, but because you're in the flesh, the enemy knows where to hurl these weapons at. You live in an evil, evil, evil time where good is spoken of as evil and evil is spoken of as good, where sexual sin is running rampant and the morality line is all blurred. Even the majority of the churches, they refuse to speak what morality is. They fear the government more than Yahweh. And for this, you pastors are going to pay. You sold your soul for this tax exempt status. How ministry for me could reward you more moner monetarily? Some of you have repented, for you did now know what you had done. Some of you have said, take this taxi census status and shove it where the sun does not shine. You please me. You have been forgiven. You have righted this wrong. But for the other pastors of the other churches, who have taken this bribery of the government to put a lock and a key over your lips. I said, away from me. I never knew you. My spirit is not found in your churches. John Steen, give a price to pay. With your soul you shall pay. You're nothing more than the orator speaker. You stand behind a pulpit, but there's nothing holy in you or your wife and the congregation that fills this hall and fills the pews, layers upon layer. I do not know any of you. You are not holy. You come to have your ears filled with only that which gives you the desire of your heart. You do not want to know anything that has to do with your spirit. Expects. You do not want to know anything that has to do with your spirits except think happy thoughts and be happy. You're under a drug. You're under an illusion. You're under my control. You're under my manipulation. You feel the offering place overflowing, heaping the wealth to one who thinks himself as an emperor. Joel Esteem and I speak to all the pastors who follow in the steps. I'm going to strip the golden calf right before your eyes, away from you. You shall wear the curse of Detram Tunye like a sicker skin, for you have led the people astray. The blind leads the blind. You have their eyes focused on the wealth of this world, so they will not look at the poverty of their soul. It's only a matter of time. Be encouraged, my precious bride. You're going to see these enemies fall. I warn you, my precious bride, your worst enemies will be found in your own household, those that have not surrendered their life and their love to me, those who do not put me first in their life and their love, those who refuse to believe the truths in the Holy Scriptures, those who refuse to admit there's only one way to heaven, through my name and shed love, those who refuse to believe there is a hell to pay for the consequences of unrepentant sin. Your worst enemy shall be found in your own household, for these are the ones that can, that inflict, can inflict the most pain. 
That's why I'm bringing my dividing sword. It is not anything new. Read the word. I am protecting you for this coming a day, and it's only a matter of time. Those that you look upon as your loved ones will betray you, will, will offer you up to the courts of the law of the land, will answer to the bounties on your head when they ask, where are they? It's only a matter of time. That's why I tell you now, be prepared, because Brian, before I take you home to heaven, before you're caught away with me, I'm going to have to teach you how to run and hide, to hide from the enemy's eyes. But it's all right, my darling ones, because it's only a matter of time. Hold him tight to the hem of my garment. Don't let go. As you sleep out in your sukkahs, remember that that's just a temporary tabernacle, just like this mortal flesh is a temporary tabernacle. And just as I keep you safe in your sukkahs, how much more will I do for you as you honor me on the holy feast, as you shun the holy days of this world? as you cleave unto me as a lover, that you do not want to leave the embrace. How much more will I hold you? How much more will I caress you? Or how much I love you, as you long for me to, love, to come? How much more do I long to come to you? I catch every one of your teardrops when you cry out to me because you are persecuted. The vials are stored here in heaven, and I catch every one of your teardrops golden bars encrusted with jewels and each one of you have a different one. Each one has a different beauty. It depends upon the suffering you've done for me, how you've been willing to be persecuted, called all manner of evil names, how much you have suffered and been willing to do it for my glory. This is how beautiful your ball is, how much you have sacrificed for me, how those of you who have given your windows, your widows, last might to this ministry, do you not understand? Nothing has been wasted. For those who sacrificed and stood up for the morality, you lay your life down to protect an unborn child. You've been willing to be humiliated and be thrown in jail to protest against abortion, same-sex marriages, in so many different ways, depending on where you are in this world. Some have been beaten, some have been tortured, some have been imprisoned. Oh, my darling ones, depending upon the persecution, depending upon the suffering you've done. This is the description of the beautiful bar that holds your tears that come as a sweet fragrance to my nostrils. I lovingly caress those bars for I know the price that you pay for me. And my darling bride, it's not only, it's not going to get any easier. Yeah, she was weeping through Elizabeth. For Satan hates you so, he hates you. He hates you, he hates you, for my praise is continually in your mouth. He angrily says, praise me, worship me, but instead you say, rebuke you, Satan, get away. The shed blood of you stands against you, and he cringes and he runs. I have taught you our sacred names. I showed you the importance of the holy feast. I told you to stand up for holiness and never compromise by doing what you know is wrong. You weep and you cry when I divide your families, when I command a husband to divorce a wife or a wife to divorce a husband. Do not hate this prophet speaking, for she says nothing that is not in my holy word. The holy word says, be not unequally yoked. This is the end time. It's only a matter of time. Everything that has been prophesied through this ministry shall come to pass. The fallen angels are going to raise, are going to raise up. The fallen angels will say, no longer believe in this Bible as per se. It's just a book of fairy tales. This is the modern age. Homosexuality and same-sex marriages, they will scream their right to kill the unborn babe in the mother's womb. Political leaders, where Satan has filled their heart to overflow, will rage and will scream, you who believe in this Yahushua, your heads shall roll. It's only a matter of time. And now I don't speak to the bride. I speak to those who will be the guests at the marriage supper of the Lamb. You must be willing to lay down your life for me. You will be in the great tribulation. For those of you who say it's too tough, it's too hard to live to be holy. I'll get it right by the great tribulation. I'll tell you this. If you cannot do it right now, and there's no sacrifice thus far you've had to make. 
you've not been told to lay down your life, to put your head in legality? What makes you think that you can do it when you cannot even do it now? What makes you think you'll have more faith than when starvation and death and devastation, when horrors uncomprehendable you shall see all around you? When the roads you will have to wade through the blood, what makes you think you'll have more faith then? Now it costs you nothing other than to be called a Bible thumper. And I do not speak to the, land, to the lands now that it costs you so much more. I speak for the majority of this earth where they've said, Oh, it's too hard for me to live holy. Oh, the devil tempts me so with porn. Oh, I cannot lay the cigarettes down on the altar. Oh, I cannot lay the boost down. Oh, it's too hard to live holy. I cannot stop the cursing come from my lips. I cannot live holy. Pray for me. I cannot live holy. What makes you think it's going to be any easier then? Your stomachs are full. Now your tongue is, isn't parched with thirst. And yet, you cannot praise me now. What makes you think it's going to be easier then? You mock prophets like this. You say, don't you dare speak of hell and the consequences of sin. You mock ministries like this. You say, you're nothing but doom and gloom. I'll show you doom and gloom. And I speak to the enemies of this ministry and those who preach holiness. I'll show you doom and gloom. I'll show you what thirst is. I'll show you what hunger is. Those that have got their eyes focused on the golden calf of this world. I'll show you what hunger is. You know your own tongue and hunger. You who are so rich in power. You trample and you stop on those who are not in your income bracket. I'll show you. I'll show you what happens to that golden calf. I'll show you. See, I was only that slain man once. I let the enemy strike my face. But there was only once. I wore the crown of thorns. I took the humiliation of this earth. But there was only once. I hung on that cross. I was being beyond recognition. I thirsted for you. I thirsted for your unrighteousness. I hunger for you. I was mocked and I was scorned. The Sukkot is the time of my birth on this earth. And how few you even acknowledge it. They take a heathen holiday dedicated to another heathen, straight from the pit of hell, and they gave me that birthday. What? But on this time of Sukkot, how few honor me, how few honor the price I pay. Oh, but I have my faith in pride. I pay the price. But it's only once, it was only once I had to die, and no man can took, no man took my life. It was I, and only I, Yosha, that said it is finished. And it was my time. I did not die in man's time. I did not arise in man's time. I rose in Yosha and Abba Yahweh's time. So I tell you this, O oh, enemies of mine, those of you who write the bless, blessing lies about this prophet and ministry, it's only a matter of time. I'm going to stomp on you. I've cursed you. Just as surely as I cursed the fig tree that did not produce fruit. It's only a matter of time. So go ahead and cast your spells. Go ahead and try to destroy the prophet speaking. You see, I only raise her up again and again. And the only and she only comes back and speaks forth my words again. You cannot take her life. It does not belong to you. Satan has no part of this ministry. Go ahead and put the ministry down. Accuse her of being too holy, too righteous. Go ahead and mock this ministry that says you must obey the ten laws and live holy as Yah is holy. Go ahead and mock. I mock the Pharisees. I call them snakes and I call them vipers. I told them they're only fit for hell. And now I say the same thing to you. It's only a matter of time. And hell and the lake of fire shall claim your souls. You've got one chance. That's after you hear this message. Will you repent? And those of you pray and you say there's only one name and his name is Jesus. Jesus. I have never said there's no power in the name at this time. And these prophetic messages again and again I've spoken for. There's forgiving, 
healing, delivering power and meaning. But it's only a matter of time when the great tribulation comes. When the great tribulation comes and the man of perdition stands thee, Judas has returned once again. He will mock all that is holy. He will say he is Jesus Christ. He will shun the name of Yahushua, for the name of Yah is in that name. What will you do then? For when you pray in the name of Jesus Christ and he raises his hand and he says, Here I am, what will you do then? For you refuse to use my Hebrew name. You say any name will do. And then I speak to the ones who insist on saying, Yeshua, again and again I've said, Yah is in my name. Yahweh is my father. I am his only begotten son. I told you, I don't care if you say Yahweh or Yahweh, but let's not carry this to the extreme for any name will, will not do. Of the hateful, 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 hateful letters. How dare, how dare some of you call yourselves mine. When you hear this message, you better fall on your face before me. You better repent. You better be sending a letter to this ministry trying to soothe the wounds that you have inflicted because she dare warns about how because this ministry preaches on holiness and because this ministry warns of the consequences of sin because this ministry prophesies the future in advance what do you think a prophet is? and for those who laugh and scorn say there is no such thing as prophecies there is no such thing as prophets anymore what will you do with my holy scriptures? do you not realize I am the spirit of prophecy? What will you do with my holy scriptures? I am prophet of the prophets. I am prophecy. The prophets prophesied, I'll come. If there was no such thing as prophets, what are you going to do with the book of revelations? How foolish. How foolish, how foolish so many of you are. For John the Revelator prophesied what is to come. Woe be unto those who are not found worthy to escape the great tribulation. Woe, 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 woe. Woe be unto those who are not found worthy to escape the great tribulation. You do not know where you've, what you've done. You do not know what you've done. But you will then. Some will be the guests of how much you've hated this ministry. At that time you'll cry and you'll repent for the spirit of destruction that you sent. Oh, you'll repent, but it's going to cost you your life. And you're going to have to look at Elizabeth in the eyes in heaven. And you'll have to admit how much I love her. And you will thank her for the price that she paid. And all those that preach this truth, all those that you scorn and mock, you'll look them in the eye and you'll apologize. It's only a matter of time that the giants fall from the sky. And was Satan mocks and he says, this day the spaceship shall come. He mocks knowing that it's my time and not his, and the giant shall fall from the skies. I do not allow just any dream to be posted at this ministry. These are holy intercessors, and I've given them dream upon dreams, forewarning what is coming from the skies, when men shall look at the skies, and their hearts shall fail of them with fear. You have no idea. You have no idea what is being sent here. So when you hear lies being spoken forth, blasphemous lies spoken against this prophet, this ministry, discern the fruit from whence it comes and you will see I have cursed it. This ministry lays everything down, every finance down, sacrifice upon sacrifice in ways you cannot begin to comprehend, just to reach one soul in ways that none of you will know. How many of you have helped? How many of you have even given a widow's might? How many can say that they have a part of this ministry? How many of you even come back to say thank you? It is no different as I healed ten lepers. lepers. Only one came back to say thank you. You see, when I tell you to support this ministry so it can continue to do what I've called it to do, I don't do it just to be a blessing unto them. I do it because I want to bless you. You who read all this, you who listen, you've, had, you've not had to sacrifice, you've not had to pay the price. 
For with every prophecy spoken through Elizabeth, there is a price to pray. For the greater the anointing, the greater the price is paid. True prophets know what suffering is. The lambs are being led to slaughter. The slaughterhouses shall be the Sunday churches. And the great tribulation there, these will be the slaughterhouses. Martyrs will be fed by communion bread. The wine and the goblet shall be the blood of the martyrs. I warned you what the mark of the beast is. The truth is here. How many of you will block your ears? How many of you will cover your eyes? How many of you will say, I don't want to hear? But to the guests I now speak, the great jubilation is on the horizon. You stand at the edge of the cliff and you shall be here. And it's only a matter of time that I speak to the guests. You better fine tune your faith now. For if you don't have faith enough now to believe me for the small things, how will you believe me for the larger things in the great tribulation? Would you have the faith to say to stone in my name, this is bread? For those that I hide and for those that I provide, it shall be like manna, like dewdrops on the grass in your backyard. But only your eyes shall see, and that's only if you have faith and believe in me. You better fine tune your faith now. Otherwise, your faith will only be enough to give you life. It's a matter, it's only a matter of time. It's only those who carry cry out to me. Now they are protected from the mind control waves that are in the air. They control your mind through the water, through the food you eat. They put the chips when you least expect it to track you like a dog, to know exactly where you are. If it's this bad now, can you imagine what it will be in the Great Tribulation? It's a matter of time. But to my bride, to my precious, precious bride, I show you the prison bars. I show you how they think. They will imprison you in five different ways. And I show you the vision when the bars I take away and there you shall stand, you who represent my five wise virgins. Your bridegroom doth come, your bridegroom doth come, and I bring with me my rewards, and each one of you I lovingly adore. Your bridegroom doth come. Hold on tight to the hem of my garment. Don't, don't look through the eyes of the flesh. Look through the eyes of your precious Ruach HaKadosh, your Imaya. Look through the eyes of your mother wisdom. Pray for more wisdom. Pray for more wisdom because you need it now. And oh, you who are the guests, pray for more wisdom. Pray for more discernment for you not only need it now, you are going to need it in the time of Jacob's trouble. You are going to need it in the great tribulation when near man, man is looked at, looked on and worshipped and adored. You have your idols now, oh world. You call them movie stars or evil demonic politicians. politicians. But I tell you this, there's coming a man who's going to be the son of perdition, the very son of Satan. Beware, you've been warned. Be warned, be very, be very, very wary. Be alert, be on guard. Because those you think you can trust, if they're not full of my spirit, if they're not bowed their knee to me, if they're not living obedient to me, if their heart is filled with rebellion, now think how much worse of it will be. You've been warned. You complain because I'm breaking up marriages, but these are marriages I never ordained. It was your flesh that put you together. And for the safety, for the safety of my bride, for the safety of even the guests, I take my dividing sword and I separate mother and father and children, those that call themselves husbands and wives, sisters and brothers, members of the family and friends. I separate those who are uniquely yoked in the business in all ways, you can only trust those who call out in my name. It's only a matter of time. I shall gather my bride, both Rev 7 and Rev 14. Oh, you'll be by my side, but hide yourself a little while. Hide yourself a little while until my wrath passes over, for Yahweh will not continue be mocked. It's only a matter of time. And think of the rewards you will have earned, and all of this will pass away, and you'll know it's all been worth it. Whatever suffering you've been ordained to do, just do it as unto me. When you are persecuted for my name's sake, realize 
They see me in you. It's only a matter of time. And you will see my love for you is such a reality. So take my grace and take my mercy. Take my hand. Let me wrap my arms around you. Let me embrace you. Oh, how much I thank you that you are mine. That you are willing to pay the price to be called Yahushua Hamashiach's bride. Amen. End of Amen. Amen. Tell the prophets to keep quiet. They say, don't talk to us about what's right. Tell us what we want to hear. Let us keep our illusions. Get out of our way and stop blocking our path. We don't want to hear about your holy God of Israel. Now this is what the holy God of Israel says. You ignore what I tell you and rely on violence and deceit. You are guilty. You are like a high wall with a crack running down it. Suddenly you collapse. You will be shattered like a clay pot. So badly broken, there is no piece big enough to pick up the hot coals with or to dip water from a, from a cistern. The sovereign Lord Yahweh, the Holy One of Israel, says to the people, Come back and quietly trust in me and be strong and be secure. Amen. It's so true that Abba Yahweh always says about this evil man, Joel Sting, because he is evil. He doesn't love the children of Maria. He is misleading the people to a false preaching of prosperity. And it's amazing what you guys said. So true. He's more teaching the people the prosperity of this life. And the people are not knowing how their souls are really, you know, hungry. Poverty, their souls, what you guys said. The poverty of their souls. And these people. These false people are leading the people astray. Their people refuse to hear God's teaching. They want a religion. You know, they want something that makes them feel good. Like Yahweh said, all they want to do is happy, happy, joy, joy. You know, that is not of Yahweh. What is it? Where is the test in that to be happy, happy, joy, joy? And these are the people who hate. Because these are not God Yahweh's children, these are the devil's children. There is no, you cannot live in peace, the children of God and the children of Satan. There is no comparison, there is no, you can't compromise, you can't have peace just like Yahweh says. He divides his children, every unequally household, he divides with the divided soul because he loves his bride. And he's helping his bride to be set apart because we're set apart God. What can a believer in your household, in your family, in your bio parents, in your brothers and sisters, when you receive Yahushua and they don't receive what you've received? The devil uses them to, to mock you, to persecute you, and they'll do everything in their power to lose your faith, to give in to the things of this world. That is why Yahushua is saying, it's a matter of time, Yahushua is coming. And his dividing sword is now, you know, happening in the churches, in the workplaces, in your homes, everywhere, to set apart his bride and his children, and to gather his children together for his glory and honor and praise. To do the work quickly, amen? I know you all want to be brides of Yahushua. Amen? 
but it is a tough calling and there is a price to pay. It's commitment, surrender all. It is, you know, it's tough, it's hard, but he says he is always there. He will never let you go, no matter what you go through. He will be there in your dark days. He will be there in your storms. He will never let go. So remember that in your time of trouble, it will only be for a little while. There is always a light at the end of the tunnel. And he will rescue you in his timing and in his perfect way, in a way that you never thought possible. He is an amazing God and he, there is no coincidence in Abba Yahweh and Yahshua and the precious throughout the dish. It is the perfect timing. And you know, think about the story of Yahushua when they said he was five days late, was it four days late? Four days late to, to, um, to heal Lazarus. But it was Yahushua's timing, perfect timing. He's teaching us, he says, Start growing in faith. Be mature in your faith because the days of coming of evil is approaching us. It's a matter of time. Great tribulation is around the corner. And to have faith is to believe that you believe that he, that he is real. He exists. He is real. He is there that when you believe him, when you call out to him, he will answer your prayers. He hears your prayers. He will answer, but not in the way you want an answer. It'll be his way of answering. But that's the faith that you must believe that when you speak to him, you are, he's actually listening to you. Because in faith you know he exists, though you haven't seen him, but in true faith and apply to everything that you do in your life. Without faith we cannot endure what we have to go through without Yahushua and Mashiach. Yahweh says, repent, repent today. Well, this is your salvation. Come out of this world. Come out of the sins that you're living now. Yahweh has mentioned this prophecy about um, homosexuality, same-sex marriages, you know, porn and cigars and cigarettes and alcohol, fornication, murder, theft. All these things are not of Yahweh. And this is how you know the difference between God's children and saints' children. God's children do what is right. They don't continue to sin because they know they have a true Father, the mighty Yahweh. He's watching. But the children of saints continues to sin and make excuses for their sins. That's why it says in the word, you know, why did Cain slay his brother Abel? It was because Cain was doing what was wrong and Abel was doing what was right in Yahweh's eyes. The children of God Almighty Yahweh continued to live holy, righteous, and defeat sin by the shed blood of Yahushua. So today is your day of salvation. Repent of your sins. Leave the world. Leave it. Surrender all to Yahushua. Your time is running out. It's a matter of time was the word today. It is a matter of time. Tomorrow you may not know. Will you live tomorrow? If you hear the calling, receive Yahushua as your Mashiach. Receive him because you need him. You need your Mashiach, especially these evil days. Evil days are approaching us. You need him. You need the light to, sh to shun. Shine the light upon your your path of darkness to make the right choice and decisions. Yeshua, He is so beautiful and precious. He has laid down His life. You've heard of the prophecy. He was, you know, mocked and scorned and humiliation in horrendous ways and you cannot explain how, how much He suffered for you and for me. Show Him how much you love Him. Give your life to Yahshua and accept him as your Mashiach. Nothing is impossible for my Yahweh. There is nothing that the blood of Yahshua cannot wash. No matter how deep you are in sin, I know, I know the shame you feel. Don't listen to the devil who is whispering in your ear, but listen to the voice of Yahshua. 
come, come and drink the living water. Come, Yahushua will caress you with loving arms. He will save your soul and wash all the filth that you have known in this world in the shed blood of Yahushua. He will make you as pure, as, as clean, as white as snow. His blood is sufficient. He will protect you and he will teach you, guide you. It will be the best thing you've ever done is to receive Yahushua as your Mashiach. Say this prayer and Yahushua, our Mashiach. Dear Yahushua, I accept you now as my Lord and Savior. You are the God that I love and I believe you paid the price for my sins at Calvary. You died and you rose from the dead on the third day and you asked me to come into my heart. Oh, Daddy, forgive me of my sins. Wash me clean of all unrighteousness. I am so sorry I have sinned and I turn away from the sins. Thank you for filling me with your Holy Spirit and giving me the desire to serve you the days of my life and live your life in me, Yahushua. So you will be glorified. Thank you for giving me the desire to read your Bible, your word, and give me the wisdom to understand it. Thank you for loving me and saving my soul, causing my faith to grow. So one day, I will be with you in heaven. Fill me with your Holy Spirit now and deliver me from the evil one. In your name, Yahushua, I pray. Help me, Yahushua, to remember all have sinned and fall short of the glory of Yahweh. And you came to save us sinners. That's why you called our Savior, Yahushua, our Mashiach. Amen. Mighty Father, Abba Yahweh, I pray you bless all those who receive their Yahushua as your image, as their Mashiach. Open their hearts to be Yahushua, oh Father. Cleanse the blood of Yahushua, Mashiach. I praise you, Father, for your holy word today. Thank you, Father, for your blessing. Your word, Abba Yahweh, is a warning to your bride and it's a warning to the guests. Preparation. Thank you, Daddy Yah, for warning your children out of your love. Thank you for all these things you have foretold told through your holy prophets and Yahushua Mashiach. Thank you, Father, beyond that you are the prophet of prophecies, Abba Yahweh. Thank you for raising up your prophets in the times, Abba Yahweh, to speak forth, to be your mouthpiece for your children, Almighty Yahweh. For surely we do need to hear you, Father. We need your word of encouragement and strength and to help us through these evil days, these evil days that will approach us, Abba Yahweh, to strengthen our faith in the name of Yahushua Mashiach. Daddy, you know, we praise you, we glorify you so much. Thank you for blessing us with your loving words. May you always continue to caress us in your arms of love. Abba Yahweh, in the name of Yeshua Mashiach. Bless all your beloved children, Abba Yahweh, whose names are written in man's book of life. And I pray they receive your word today, Abba Yahweh, your word of love, and your sure Mashiach. May we get ready, may we be prepared. Abba Yah, for the return of our Mashiach, our soon coming bridegroom. Yahushua doth come, and Yahushua Mashiach's name we pray. Oh, Yahushua come, Yahushua come. In the name of Yahushua Mashiach, bless all your beloved children, and Yahushua Mashiach's name I pray.
Thank you.